Well, we're out today doing some trail camera maintenance on a parcel next to the office. And one of the things on the list to do was put up a booster antenna on a camera that was getting iffy service. And we thought uh, while we were doing that, we thought it would be a good idea to talk about how to find cell coverage on your property. You know, there's more and more people coming into cell cameras, wanting to use cell cameras. You know, there's a lot of people, um, I guess, that are on the fence and they have these questions and they're not sure what the answer is. And the questions really stem from cell coverage. You know, what kind of cell coverage do I have in my property? How can I tell before I buy a camera? Is there a way to figure out which carrier is best for my area? So all these questions keep a lot of people on the fence. And it, again, there's not a lot of cell camera companies or trail camera companies in general talking about this, but there are a few easy things you could do to figure out what service you have on your property before you actually go out and buy your camera. Because the last thing you want to do is buy a camera, take it out to your parcel, and find you don't have service. So one of the most simple things you could do is obviously take your mobile phone, your mobile device, and go to a camera location and look to see if you have service. I mean, that's pretty common sense. And whatever phone carrier you're, you have, if you have you know three bars of service on your phone, then you know any cell camera with that same provider obviously is gonna work in that spot. The next thing you could do is physically buy a camera and walk around and do the same thing. It's not very conducive to spend the money before you know, but it is an option. Now, the real tricky stuff comes into play when, let's say you have a Verizon phone and you go to your property and you don't have any Verizon service, but maybe there's AT&T service. So how do you go through and kind of figure that stuff out? That's the real question. So what we want to talk about are some free apps downloadable to your mobile device that will give you the information um, about cellular network at that specific, specific location while you're there. So the first app we want to talk about is an app called Open Signal. Open Signal is probably one of the more popular apps because it's available both for iOS and Android devices. Um, when you get into iOS, there's not um, as many options available. So Open Signal is one of the, again, more used, um, more, more used apps. And basically Open Signal will give you the signal strength, whether it's um, 2G, 3G, 4G, LTE, Wi-Fi, um, even, it'll even go as far as like your phone antennas, um, measuring the signal for your phone antennas. So, the downside to open signal is it's not very intuitive. It's hard to read, it's hard to understand. Um, but again, with limited options, it's one of the more commonly used apps. The next app we wanna talk about is Network Cell Lite. This application is only available on your Android Play Store. So no iPhones, it's not compatible with iOS. This app is, it works a little bit different. It looks a little bit different, but it'll give you actually um, the location of your signal on a map. So you can kind of reference that. And then it color codes the signal sent, which makes it a lot more user friendly. You know, you're not going through a bunch of numbers, you know, minus 50 DBI, minus 120 DBI. There's no, I guess, conflict of ignorance with that app. It's very user friendly. The last app we want to talk about is an app called Root Metrics. And Root Metrics does a very good job. It's a very clean, very good app. Before we talk about the pros to Root Metrics, we want to talk about the con, which prevents us from really recommending it and personally using it. So Root Metrics provides data through a data, data capture program. So when you download that app and you go through the privacy policy and you hit yes, Root Data is taking any information they can get from your personal mobile device and then using that to compile data for other users. So just to note, there's a lot of people that get freaked out about you know privacy policies, policies and security um, features, you know, with these mobile devices and on the web and root metrics is a company that's going to take your data and use it, um, in their, inside their application. So the good thing about root metrics is it is available both for iOS and Android. And even though we talked about the data capture being a con, it actually can become a pro if you're okay with, you know, giving up some security there because it's compiling data of real users, real phone users, real uh, mobile device users in that specific area, giving you a more accurate um, signal strength generation versus, you know, maybe a one-off or a two-off. So they're compiling a long list of, of data and kind of taking the average um, between those data readings and, you know, then providing them to the end user. So, but again, security stuff there uh, could be a potential issue for you. So the last tool we want to talk about is not actually a mobile app. And forgive me, I'm going to have to use my notes on my phone here to um, talk about this, but this is actually a built-in feature on your mobile device. So if you take your mobile phone and press star 300, one pound, one, two, three, four, five pound, 
there's actually a built-in tool that will pop up on your mobile device and give you various signal readings, various signal strengths. It'll tell you if you're on 4G, LTE, if you're on band four, band 13. It provides a ton of information. It's completely free. And it's one of the things that we have found to be most accurate. So when we find ourselves in the field in these similar situations, um, not knowing if we're gonna, or if we're gonna have cell service, and for example, we, we had this happen in Kansas while we were turkey hunting. I'm out scouting for deer, wanting to hang cameras, and we're in spotty service areas. These are the tools that we're using to figure out if we can put a camera there without really going through the trouble of you know wasting so much time and then finding out it's not working. So before we go, we wanna give you guys some baseline information because you start using these apps and tools and they're gonna spit out a bunch of numbers and without having any understanding of those numbers, you're not gonna know what the heck is good signal, what the heck is bad signal. So we wanna give you guys some reference points to use this uh, you know, to your good. So mobile signals are gonna be measured in decibels, in dB, uh, abbreviation dB. So when you see dB or mobile signal, that's, that's, the, um, that's the unit of measure. Signal strength, which is different, um, is going to be measured in uh, decibel milliwatts. So, you know, similar uh, abbreviation dBm for for decibel milliwatts. And when you start to look at you know, the signal strength, minus 50 is going to be considered, you know, full capacity. That's as that's as strong as a signal as you're going to get. And minus 120 is going to be I guess the worst possible scenario where you still have signal. So the closer that number is to minus 50, the better off you are. The closer you are to minus 120, um, the worse the scenario is gonna play out for you.